Welcome students, Tom Hermer here, your accounting professor, and this is a demonstration of doing a bank reconciliation problem that is presented in a narrative format. So this is uh, more um, oh, theoretical, just understanding uh, where different numbers go. Uh, the other uh, bank reconciliation is detailed illustrative with a bank statement and uh, uh, check registers or chart of accounts for the cash account where this one is uh, called narrative. And so the strategy for doing a narrative bank reconciliation is just to place the numbers as we come to them. So let's do this bank reconciliation. Cantu Office Supply Company received a bank statement showing a balance of $67,905 on March 31st. Okay, that's balance per bank. That's gonna go right here. That is 67,905. Okay, so we got the first number. The firm's record showed a book balance of 69,387. Okay, balance per books, 69,387. Okay, the difference between these two balances was caused by the following items. Prepare a bank reconciliation for the firm as of March 31st and the necessary journal entries from the statement. Okay, the first item here, a debit memorandum for $30, which covers the bank's collection fees on a note, was on the bank statement, but not in our books. So since it's in the bank number here, we don't need to do an adjustment to bank, but it's not in our books yet, so we need to do an adjustment there. So let's see, I'll just go ahead and, and put uh, that guy right here. Okay, and that was... Uh, uh, Service fee for, let's see, that was covers collection fee. Okay, and that is, I'll just go ahead and put this in as a minus number, minus 50. It's going to be a deduction. Okay, a deposit in transit of $3,710. Well, if it's in transit, that means it's in our books. So that 3710 is in the $69,000 number here. But it's not in the bank yet. So we're going to add that as a deposit Deposit in transit of $3,710 is going to be added. Uh, let's see. I guess there's only one deposit of $3,710. I'll just go ahead and put it in the addition column. Okay. A check for two... $256 is issued by another firm that was mistakenly charged to Cantu's account. Well, that shouldn't be in our books. We're not going to put that in our books, and it should be taken out of the bank statement amount. So we should be adding that back. So I guess I'll take this back. I'm going to put 3710 back and delete that. And then I've got a, a, a check uh, bank error. Bank error, that was uh, for uh, $256. Okay, so we've got the bank error is going to be added back to the bank balance. The deposit in transit from our books is going to be added, and that's $3,710. Okay, now let's continue. A debit memorandum for an NSF check for $6,007 issued by Wilson Construction Company, a credit customer. You know, that showed a debit memo It's going to be in the bank statement, so that's included in this number, but it's not included in our balance per book. So we've got here uh, NSF check, NSF check for $6,007 minus six, seven, okay, okay. An outstanding checks of 3782 for 2150 and 3840 for 171. Outstanding checks, of course, are going to be in our book balance, but they haven't cleared the bank yet, so we're going to be deducting outstanding checks. Okay, so there's our two outstanding checks, 3782 for 2150, 3840. Okay. Now, a credit memorandum for $6,200, non-interest bearing note receivable that the bank collected from the firm. So the bank has received $6,200. It's in their balance here. But we don't have that in our books yet because it, they didn't bring it to our company, to our bookkeeper, 
to deposit, they pay directly to the bank. So we have here, um, that would be an electronic funds transfer or a direct deposit, okay, a direct deposit to our firm, okay, and they didn't give us the name there, but it's 6200 there's only one, so I'll put it in the totals column, we're adding that. Now let's go here and we will uh, get our total deductions here. Okay, so I've got, come on. Okay, so my total deductions here on our adjusted balance per bank is 6055 we got an addition to 6200 we'll get our total here go all the way up grab the total amount so we've got an adjusted balance per bank here of uh, go ahead and get those commas in there we go now we need to get our our adjusted balance per bank so I've got my total additions here of 3,966 and our total deductions here of 2,321 so an adjusted balance per bank is going to be $69,555 wow, I'm $20 off well so going back into reviewing what I've entered here I had a $30 debit memo covers the bank collection fee and I put that in is 50 so that should be minus 30 Let's see how that gets us in line so I am now reconciled so one so that's how you'll find your errors if your balance adjusted balance per bank doesn't equal your adjusted balance per books then you are not uh, reconciled it looks like this guy here needs to hmm this guy here needs to come down I'll move it down Boom, there we go. Okay, so there's our bank reconciliation. Now we have to journalize. We don't have to journalize anything in the balance per bank section because all of these items are in our books. The deposit and transit's in our books. The bank error is being taken out of their balance. That doesn't need to be in our books. Outstanding checks are both in our books. But the things that we have that need to be added and subtracted in our books are the deposit and transit, all the adjustments per, per the balance per books. Okay, so we've got here a deposit and transit, and this is dated, dated March 31, 2010. So our first adjustment here will be this direct deposit for 6200, and that is going to be cash 6200, and we've got a credit to accounts receivable they didn't give us the customer name if we had the customer name we'd actually make a memo of their name here too okay and this is um, okay so there we've gotten the um, direct deposit here I'll just highlight that in yellow now we've got these two here to go. These have to be journalized, okay? So that's going to also be on the 31st. And we have a service fee, so we have a miscellaneous expense for our service fees in this particular company. That's going to be a debit of 30. Okay, and then a credit to cash for a 30. And then this is uh, okay. And then we have another one here on the 30th. Let's see if I can get this a little bit farther down. Okay, and this is the NSF check. Now, NSF check, a bounce check, is always going to be debited to accounts receivable. And the person who bounced it, let's see if they told us. Okay, this is from Wilson Construction Company, 6007. This is 
Okay. 6007. A credit to 6007. That credit is going to be the cash because we we thought that that check, that $6,007 check was deposited. That's in this number here, the balance per books. We find out from the bank statement it bounced, so we have to take it back out here. Okay, and then we go here. NSF check. Okay, so there, once we've posted these, we have journalized all the adjusting entries in the bank statement. And once these transactions cleared the bank, then the bank balance and the book balance in reality will be the same. But in the meantime, we have our bank reconciliation. This is done from a narrative format. So thank you very much and best wishes on your practice.